Hey everyone, uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, as you guys know, I did a, um, a music video today for the Odes of Solomon Ode 8. And um, I just want to point something out. Um, I want to invite you guys to actually study this ode. You know, it's really amazing. I was just looking at this translation. And I took this to heart. I never noticed this before. And this ode, which is was probably originally a song, is really a Hebrew song. And there, you know, um, there were, this, this ode is literally a crescendo into our redemption and our destiny in Messiah. It's really amazing. It really is amazing. So I want to invite, invite you guys to study this and consider this. Do you see the subtle transition in the text to the lowly state we are called to in our flesh nature to take up our cross and follow Messiah? And, and as it slowly crescendos to how we're called to be receiving our glorified light bodies and eventually ending in having everlasting eternal life even after the millennial reign at the end of all flesh and we just live forever um so this ode actually crescendos into that it's really beautiful subtly very subtly and it gives us amazing insight and instruction on how we should be walking okay so i just want to invite you guys to meditate on this and see if you see it yourself okay so Let's take a look. First, uh, verses 1 through 3 are probably something to study as a standalone, the first section. And now in this ode, here we are in our flesh state. We're in our sin nature, our lowliness of state, receiving Messiah by faith. We're taking up our cross and following Messiah. On that hope to the glorious promises for us, right? Okay. And that's, so this ode is crescendoing all the way from our redemption even to the everlasting promises that we have. And it, tell, and it just gives us amazing wisdom and insight in how we should be walking. So let's look at verse 1 through 3. Open you, open you your hearts to the exaltation of Yahuwah. And let your love be multiplied from the heart even to the lips. Bring forth fruit to Yahuwah. Fruit, holy fruit. All, right, my, all, my, all my books add living fruit as well. Very interesting. And to talk with watchfulness in his light. So this is telling us not only our hearts have to be bringing forth good fruit, but our lips have to bring forth good fruit. And how many scriptures are there that the tongue is, you know, what we speak, come on, most of you guys who know your Bibles know these scriptures. There are so many overwhelming scriptures on how we should talk. Um, even when uh, people say evil about us, uh, we just focus on the light. So, um, you know, because the fruit of our lips, um, there's a lot of power in the fruit of our lips. So, open you, open you, your, open your hearts to the exaltation of Yahuwah. Okay, this is against our sin nature. And let your love be multiplied from the heart and even to the lips. Speak with love. But it's not like just saying everything's okay and singing kumbaya, you know. But to bring forth fruit to the Lord. Now, my, my all my books that I have that I cannot find, on, translations that are not on the internet, and living fruit, holy fruit, and to walk with watchfulness in his light. So not only are we supposed to uh, build up and edify each other only, but we also had to talk, but we also are called to be watchful, to call things out when they're not appropriate, but we do it in his light. We do it in love. It's not, it's not easy to do this stuff, guys. It's not easy to do this stuff at all. So this is something to really meditate on. Unfortunately, every version on the internet, um, both translations I have in, in my books right here, both translations on my books have living fruit and holy fruit. 
So there's an addition to living fruit, and I think that's pretty relevant. So let's continue. Rise up and stand erect, ye who sometimes were brought low. Tell forth you who were in silence, that your mouth has been opened. Ye, therefore, that were despised, be henceforth lifted up, because your righteousness has been exalted. Right? When we take up our cross and follow Yeshua, right? He's going to lift us up. All this stuff is biblical doctrine. Okay? He lifts up those who were bowed down and all that kind of stuff. For the right hand of Yahuwah is with you, and he is your helper. Okay? So, I don't know. Let's just keep reading and see if you can see the crescendo into our redemption. The crescendo into, um, you know, exactly what this says. From the person of the psalmist to the person of Yahuwah. It's, oh, this is so awesome. Okay, we're on verse 8. Excuse me. And peace was prepared for you before ever your war was. Okay? Hear the word of truth and receive knowledge of the Most High. Your flesh has not known what I am saying to you, neither have your hearts known what I am showing to you. So we're still in our sin, we're still in our flesh nature. We're still in our sin nature flesh, according to this ode, and we're crescendoing to our redemption. Right? Being instructed as the crescendo of our redemption. Keep my secret, ye who are kept by it. Okay? Our redemption is a secret to the Satanists, to the wicked, to the heathen. It's a secret because they deny um, the word of Yah. So this stuff is a secret to them. And it, and it gets revealed as time goes on, as revelation grows on. So that's why this stuff is a secret. They, they have, you know, like the Wisdom of Solomon says, uh, they murder us and slaughter us and make us bow down as if we were the pavement on the road. But they, but they don't discern the reward for blameless souls. They don't discern um, when, when the dead are resurrected and we're received in our glorified bodies. They won't even be able to stand in our presence. It's just, you know. So it's this is a secret. This is Yah's secret. Keep my faith, you who are kept by it. Right, we walk by faith. Sorry, I look like a mess. And understand my knowledge, ye who know me in truth. And we're called to seek out wisdom. Love me with affection, you who love. For I do not turn away my face from them that are mine. Okay, so here we are getting our glorified light bodies. Do you see it? Do you see it? Here we are glorified in our redemption. For I know them, and before they came into being, I took knowledge of them. And, for, and on their faces I set my seal. Okay, so we started in our flesh nature, now we're in our glorified state. You see the crescendo? It's a very subtle crescendo. This is amazing. I fashioned their members, my own breast I prepared for them, that they might drink my holy milk and live thereby. Here we go. My own breast. This is a Jewish idiom, a Hebrew idiom. Proof that this was originally a Hebrew text. I'm sure King Solomon wrote this. Because um, it has the same, clearly, I think it's very obvious, the same author of this text was the, was the author of the Song of Songs in our Bibles. So this is a deep text. I was meditating on this this afternoon when I was walking my dog. I fashioned their members, my own breast I prepared, and breast in the Hebrew idiom, this is not some weird sexual thing. This is like the nurturing, right? Nurturing. The motherhood of breast, right? Um... There are interpretations that the word Yahuwah, God, is actually a resemblance of breasts, okay, in the Hebrew idiom. I fashioned their members, my own breasts, I prepared for them, that they might drink my holy milk and live thereby. All this stuff you think we know so much now, it's all just milk. It's all just milk because his wisdom is infinite. I was meditating on this, it's just amazing. I took pleasure in them and I'm not ashamed of them. Right? For, because those who are ashamed of him, he will be ashamed of us, as the Gospels say. We're already in our glorified state, as this hymn goes. For my workmanship are they, and the strength of my thoughts. Right? This is, we know we're in our glorified states, because this is not um, Zephaniah 3.9, where he's going to give us a new language. 
a new language of one consent, right? Amazing stuff. Can you perceive it? It's amazing. Who then shall rise up against my handiwork? Or who is there that is not subject to them? Right? Because we in our glorified states, we are called the perfect. Um, we will be immortal. It doesn't mean bad things won't happen to us. I don't see that in the scriptures, at least yet, until the kingdom comes, but until Satan is bound. But um, we will have um, a spiritual upper hand in ways we can't even conceive of in our glorified light bodies. I willed and fashioned mind and heart, and they are mine, and my own right hand I set my elect ones. Right? It's just talking about our glorified state. And my righteousness goes before them, and they shall not be deprived of my name, for it is with them. These are the promises that we have. We are sealed. Now, ask and abound and abide in the love of Yahuwah. And yet, beloved ones, in the beloved, those who are kept in him that live, and they that are saved in him that was saved. Okay, all right, this is something I'm personally wrestling with and trying to understand theologically. I got three minutes left. Um, and I know some people that follow me get thrown off, but I'm, I'm still wrestling and trying to understand, but there does seem to be a sifting of wheat process when we get into the kingdom. Maybe people will fall away. I don't know. Or maybe, maybe at first, Yah is going to redeem so many people that don't even deserve to be, even the heathen people, he'll redeem so many, like in the book of Hosea. And, and then when the kingdom comes, that's, you know, those who fall away will be eventually rooted out. I, I don't know, but... There clearly seems to be a sifting of wheat process after our redemption. And here it's it's presented here in this text as well. Uh, I don't know. His stuff is a mystery. I don't have all the answers. And you shall be found incorrupt in all ages to the name of your father. Hallelujah. So this is after the white throne judgment, after the end of all flesh. When we receive everlasting life and we can't even conceive of what this stuff means. So... The, I just was blown away. This is not just some amazing inspired text to study like, okay, verse here, verse there. This ode, which was likely original, originally a song, is a crescendo from our flesh nature to our glorified life bodies all the way up to everlasting life when we're just spiritual beings. When, when there is no more flesh, you know, the last closing chapters of Revelation talk about this. Amazing amazing so it's just something to meditate on i just want to invite you guys to just uh curl up with this ode and um and check it out um i'm just going to repeat myself unfortunately um in this verse all the book all the translations i've i looked for online don't have it but in all my hard hard copy books um it has a living fruit and holy fruit and i think that's significant but for some reason, all the versions online don't have living fruit for verse 3. So something to consider. Uh, you might want to write that as a note because it is relevant when uh, meditating and studying these words as an instruction on how we should be walking. So living fruit, holy fruit. What is living fruit? It just it doesn't end just like the, the word of Yah, bubbling springs of living water. We get baptized in living water because... Um, Yeshua is the rock when, right, gushing out that water because he's the key to the scriptures. It's living water. It doesn't end. It just keeps going and going and going. So we're supposed to bring forth living fruit and holy fruit out of our lips, out of our hearts. Amazing. Amazing. All right. Y'all bless you guys. I pray this is a blessing to you guys. Uh, uh, good night.